Hey Shagheads, welcome to another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. I'm Curtis Tucker, aka Shags, living the American dream here in small town Enid, Oklahoma. Follow along as I entrepreneur from home and show you what life is like in Midwest America. Enjoy my everyday stories about family, my hometown, making money online, growing a lifestyle brand, creating content, anything about the 1970s and more. So I appreciate you guys being here. Hope you've enjoyed the last couple episodes. I think I missed an episode last week. Uh, just trying to squeeze those in. Uh, got a quick update for you guys. Uh, one of the things that I am going to be trying to do, I would love to open up a gallery here in Enid, Oklahoma where I can put some of the shaggy duck artwork that I'm gonna be doing and maybe some artwork of some other uh, guys that I know. And then Todd and I can also silk screen in the back of the gallery and sell t-shirts and other merchandise uh, centered around the 70s and things like that from uh, the, the front of the store as well or the front of the gallery. So to help raise money, for uh, a possible building to uh, have a gallery and we're doing a couple things. Uh, eventually, we'll, uh, the thought is to have some Shaggy Duck NFTs for sale. I'm working on that, trying to decide how many and how I'm gonna do that. But then uh, another thing is, if you guys listen to our podcast and you would like to contribute, you can go to patreon.com slash shags S-H-A-G-G-S, -G -G and contribute $5, and $5 a month for however long you want, and I will send you guys out. I've got the uh, Shaggy Duck sticker you would get. You're also gonna get a Shags sticker, and then part of that package uh, also includes a um, 70s Buzz podcast sticker, and then also, if you order this week, if you guys become a Patreon member this week, you're gonna get a Greatest Decade Known to Man coaster with uh, Todd and I's uh, picture on there. So if you're listening to this podcast and uh, you're not seeing this stuff, you guys can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV, and I do record video these uh, podcasts for you all that would rather watch rather than listen. So check it out over there. You can see some of the Shaggy Duck studio behind me. I've got my trusty mascot down here by my foot and he is asleep. So hopefully I can get through this episode without him waking up and jumping all over me. And so uh, don't forget, I would love to connect with you guys. Uh, this is just kind of a funky little journal of what's going on with my life. And uh, I mean, a ton of stuff is going on. Um, I just, um, I'll try to pick certain subjects uh, every week. But this week, um, I talk a lot about the 70s. And, and if you listen to me over on the 70s Buzz podcast, um, you know, every episode there is about the 70s. But I've got some old uh, blog posts that I had done. Um, I started blogging about the 70s way back in uh, 2000 and 2005. I mean, way back when. And so I've, I've been able to pull up some of those old websites and look at some of my old blog posts. And I ran across one that was kind of fun and it kind of, it's kind of the central thought of what really got me going on all this uh, 1970s thing. You know, it kind of, it was these memories of me running around Enid, Oklahoma uh, as a kid in the 1970s and all these special memories that I had. And that's why I started blogging about the 70s uh, in early 2000 and then eventually uh, talked Todd into doing a podcast with me. And, uh, but I found this list and it's, uh, it's on curtistucker.com on the blog now. And it's basically kind of 100 of my favorite memories of growing up in the 70s. And what I'm gonna try to do is zip through these real quick. I'll just kind of name them off. And then if there's a few in particular, I will uh, go into a little bit of detail and we'll see if I can get through all 100 of these. But uh, if you grew up in the 1970s, some of these should spark a little bit of memory for you. If you did not grow up in the 1970s, uh, hopefully you'll kind of get a feel for what growing up in the 1970s was like because I uh, have to tell you it was, it was the funnest, the coolest time 
ever. I really enjoyed it. Uh, again, it was small town Enid, Oklahoma. My parents were divorced, so my sister and I got to spend a lot of time home alone. My mom was working a full-time job and then had part-time jobs to help out after. So we had a lot of freedom. Uh, I got to get on my banana seat bike and, and go all over town and, and then just walking, you know, all over town. So anyway, uh, I'm going to cruise through this list. I've got it here on my other computer. I'll be looking at a little bit if you notice me um, glancing away on the video. But uh, here goes. Here's a 100 of my favorite memories of the 1970s. Uh, number one, jumping on my best friend's trampoline. And so that would be State and Petty John. He moved to Enid, I believe it was 1974, and it was the summer right before our sixth grade year. I, I don't even know if I realized much of what a trampoline was. I probably had seen one on TV. I had never been near a trampoline at that time. And then all of a sudden this kid comes to town and he lives a couple blocks away and he's got a school uh, rectangle. He had a rectangle uh, trampoline. So back then, nowadays it seems like all trampolines are circle. Uh, back then he had a rectangle trampoline and it was right there in his backyard. Uh, and then I ended up being in class with him in sixth grade. We started talking. He said, hey, I've got this trampoline. Come over. Um, went over and uh, started jumping on his trampoline and and my best friend that I'd had for years and years happened to get in the other sixth grade class so we weren't able to you know stay in as close of contact uh, and so eventually I became best friends with State and so since uh, 1974 in the sixth grade we've been best friends and it was that trampoline um, that was, you know, kind of the start of it. We played dodgeball on the trampoline. We'd put the sprinkler under it. We would camp out on it. We would sleep on it. We would, um, it just seemed like just so much of our life was centered around uh, that trampoline. So uh, one of the top memories is jumping on the trampoline. Number two, catching tadpoles in Boggy Creek. So uh, I lived in a neighborhood and uh, then it was next to a highway, uh, Highway 412. And then across the highway, there was kind of a field and, and, and then a hill. And if you went down the hill, there was this place called the Bird Sanctuary. And it was kind of a park. And then in that park, there was a winding creek that went through and it was called Boggy Creek. And so, uh, you know, we would get brave enough and run across that highway and make it down that hill. And we spent a lot of time in that creek, you know, with our tennis shoes on, chasing tadpoles and frogs and uh, salamanders and, and all kinds of stuff. And we'd put them in jars and stuff and take them back home and um, just all kinds of fun stuff there. So uh, chasing tadpoles uh, in Boggy Creek uh, was a fun memory. Number three, watching Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, a lot of people remember that, you know, it was Bugs Bunny was usually the first set of cartoons and then always loved Scooby-Doo. Uh, you know, and then some of them weren't even cartoons. There was uh, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, uh, those type of shows as well. And you'd watch those all morning long and then you'd kind of get into some really cool, uh, more not cartoon, but uh, Tarzan would be on or um, Charlie Chan, some really cool old, older movies or stuff. But anyway, getting up early on Saturday mornings, eating cereal and watching cartoons was a big deal. Uh, number four, sneaking space food sticks between meals. Uh, that Man, that was a big deal. My mom would come home with a box of space food sticks, and I can't remember, maybe they had like six or eight or 12 space food sticks, and they were pretty, pretty skinny. Um, but man, I could, she would buy that box, and I would have it half eaten on the first day and usually gone by the second day, and I would usually, you know, sneak those out uh, between meals when she wasn't looking. And I think, uh, if I remember correctly, I think peanut butter was probably my favorite uh, flavor, but loved those space food sticks. Number five, dodgeball, anytime, anywhere. Uh, the funnest part of PE in grade school and uh, junior high was playing dodgeball. And when we were not playing dodgeball at school, uh, we were playing dodgeball in Staten's backyard. 
uh, one person on each side of the trampoline and then you would throw the ball at the person jumping on the trampoline and if you hit them then you got to get up on the trampoline and so that was dodgeball trampoline. Um, I wasn't, um, I was kind of an athletic kid but skinny, not strong but skinny. Um, had a lot of endurance but I just, I never had the confidence to go out for sports but um, one thing I was fairly good at was playing dodgeball, and so I really enjoyed playing dodgeball whenever I got a chance. Uh, number six, recording Dr. Demento on Sunday night. Uh, you know, back in the 70s, I had a cheesy little record player, not a whole lot of records uh, or tapes, and this was probably before, well, no, it was, it was right when cassettes um, had become popular, and so in the 70s we made um, mixtapes, or basically mixtapes, and one of my favorite mixtapes to make would be on Sunday night, Dr. Demento would come on the radio, and I would basically sit there and record uh, as many of the silly songs, you know, the cockroach that ain't Cincinnati, and shaving cream, and they're coming to take me away, and um, all those really goofy, crazy songs from the 70s, and I would record those, and then um, I would play the tape uh, to, you know, soothe me to sleep, and, uh, you know, uh, just, so, anyway, uh, making, or even just listening to Dr. Minuto was fun. Uh, number seven, walking down the railroad tracks on the rails. So between uh, my house and my best friend before Staten, so this would have been like third, fourth, fifth grade, uh, there was a set of railroad tracks that, that you basically could get on the railroad tracks and go from my house to his house. And so we spent a lot of time on the railroad tracks, uh, especially in the summer. You know, you try to walk along the rail. Um, we spent a lot of time barefooted. Um, the rail would get hot. We'd put pennies on the track and smash those. Uh, there was just, all, you know, you always you were always finding something on the railroad tracks. Um, uh, pretty pretty fun there. Uh, number eight, shopping pawn shops for comic books. So we had an area of downtown Enid that had about three, I believe it was two or three pawn shops all on East, uh, actually it was West Main, the 100 block of West Main, and we would ride our bikes without our parents knowing um, and cruise downtown, and in the pawn shops they had comic books and Chinese throwing stars, and gosh, what else would we buy? But the main point was uh, getting comic books. And so that's where a lot, and I've still got my box of comic books and a large portion, probably 80% of those comic books came from those pawn shops, um, especially Baker's Pawn Shop. Number nine, riding bikes across town without our parents knowing, well, that's part of the pawn shop deal. Uh, we get on our banana seat bikes and we could just basically ride almost anywhere and our parent, you know, there was no phones no cell phones. Um, so once you took off, your parents usually did not know where you were. And so uh, we would just take off and have fun and cruise all over town. Um, number 10, going to Disney movies in the afternoon. So in the summers or on the weekends, we had a, a theater in downtown Enid, Oklahoma, you know, in a big, just a building. It wasn't like a a movie theater that you see today, you know, our, our first movie theaters in Enid were in these brick buildings downtown, and uh, there was one called the Esquire, and the Esquire was famous for showing all the Disney movies, and so we would basically ride our banana seat bikes to the Esquire, just lean them over and dump them on the sidewalk and pay, it seems like 50 cents was what it would cost to see a movie back then, and uh, just go in and see a Disney movie and uh, hop on our bike and ride back home. So that was always fun. Um, number 11, buying sixlets in Jolly Ranchers. So I was the king of buying penny candy back in the day. You know, anytime I got some money, I would go down to either, I can't remember the exact convenience store that was one direction from my house, but then as I got, so on Johnson Street, it was a convenience store across that highway that I had to go to when I moved over to Broadway, which is really just four, about four blocks down. Um, Fitzsimmons was the convenience store that I went to. But, you know, back in the 70s, you could buy candy for a penny. And so Jolly Ranchers uh, were a penny and those little sixlets, which are the uh, candy coated chocolate, little chocolate balls, um, I would buy those. Sometimes if I had, you know, if I was blessed by having like a dollar or two, 
Um, sometimes I'd buy a box, you know, they'd be like a hundred in a box and they would sell me the whole box. And so, and then that's where um, I'd buy Jolly Ranchers uh, for a penny or two pennies at that time, I think maybe by the time I went to uh, junior high and I would sell them for nickel. And that's kind of where I started uh, my entrepreneur career was selling Jolly Ranchers uh, at um, junior high. And so number 12, sliding down hills on the cardboard boxes. Um, the best place to do that was on that hill uh, between our house and Boggy Creek. There was this, uh, just this little slope. And so uh, you, we would go along the businesses that were in that area and, and uh, dig out cardboard boxes and then tear them open so they were flat. And then basically just spend uh, half a day sliding down a hill on those boxes, and I mean, it was fun. It was a blast. It was, it was just sliding down on cardboard boxes. Um, number thirteen, riding skateboards over wooden ramps. Uh, skateboarding. I was never a real good skateboarder, uh, but I enjoyed my uh, blue Grintech that my mom got me from Otasco. And so um, we would try to jump over things, you know, set up little ramps. And then we had a really cool area that was along Boggy Creek that was this parking lot for a, these, these buildings up on stilts, which actually my wife works at now in one of those buildings, which is kind of weird. So every time I go there, I get to see the, the place where I skateboarded. But um, it, was a, it was a really hilly area because it was right next to the creek and uh, some really cool hills for skateboarders. And so we would spend a lot of time skateboarding down those hills. Um, playing hide-and-go-seek games after dark, well, basically that's Musculins. Um, probably one of my best memories, there was about uh, five of us, a core five of us that would play almost every night. It was one of those deals where um, you start playing and you'd forget about dinner. You, you didn't go home until the street lights came on. And uh, we had this one particular block on West Broadway that we would play, and we would play that game for hours and hours and try to get all the rest of the kids uh, in the neighborhood. And I've got a, a whole episode on the 70s buzz, but uh, it was basically a game, uh, hide and seek, kick the can, and tag all meld together into a really fun game. And so that was really fun. Um, number 15, recording goofy skits on cassette tapes. I still have some of those cassette tapes and I'm too embarrassed to even play them for people. But uh, we watched a lot of Saturday Night Live and um, uh, the Monty Python's Flying Circus, you know, and those were all made up of skits. And so we would make up our own skits and record them on these cassettes and uh, they were pretty silly. So I've still got some of those. Number 16, ah, am I gonna have to, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get through all these. Um, drinking cold water out of the garden hose. Uh, you know, when you were hot and sweaty from playing kill the man or riding your bikes, you just, sometimes we would drop by a house we didn't even know. We might not have known the people, but if they had a hose out in the front yard and we could reach the faucet, we would just drink out of the faucet. Um, luckily, a lot of people in Enid ran their outside faucets on well water, which basically was really nice, clean, cold water from underground. So um, anyway, never thought about it. I don't know that we ever got sick off of it. Uh, number 17, stopping for a Dr. Pepper with good ice. So my mom got me started there. Um, she kind of got me hooked on Dr. Pepper as a kid. I have since given up pop about you know, 20, 30 years ago. But when I was a kid, I did drink Dr. Pepper and we did have this one a restaurant called Somewhere that we would go to and get Dr. Peppers before we would go to a place called the Gaslight Theater where my mom would do some painting and we would hang out. But they had, um, it wasn't like cell sonic pellet ice, but it was shaved ice. And so it was really crunchy, really soft, really, it soaked up the Dr. Pepper. And so that's where I got my affinity for um, having good ice. Number 18. Building Scary Box Mazes at Halloween. Uh, I've got an episode of that uh, over on the 70s Buzz podcast as well. But basically, uh, Staten's dad would let us take over his garage, which was kind of divided into kind of like four different areas. And so we would scour the area for large cardboard boxes and we would truck those home on our banana seat bikes and get duct tape, cut holes in them, make rooms out of some of them, and just build a maze that you had to crawl through. Um, you know, we would start in September 
and build that all the way through September and October. And then on Halloween night, we basically would play some scary music and stand out in the front of Staten's house. And as the kids came by, we'd say, hey, we've got a haunted maze back here. You guys want to come in? And so the neighborhood kids would, and we didn't even charge. We were just doing it for fun. Um, and the kids would go through our uh, haunted maze. Man, that was that was just so much fun. Uh, and it was probably the fun part was just building the darn maze. Um, you know, we had a heck of a time on Halloween night, but uh, it was the two months prior building it was great. Number 19, catching box turtles and racing them. I uh, mainly did that when I was a little kid in the early 70s. I uh, had a huge fascination with uh, turtles and being in Oklahoma. Uh, the, with the wheat fields and stuff, it always, uh, during wheat harvest and stuff, it would cause the box turtles to uh, try to get away from the combines, and so you'd find them crossing the streets all the time, and we would collect them, and back in that day, we didn't know any better, and so we would paint the, sh the back of the shell of the box turtle, and then, you know, like kind of like a solid color, and then you'd paint a number, and so we'd have, you know, numbered turtles, so when we raced, we would know which turtle was ours. Uh, number 20, number 20, uh, watching Charlie Brown holiday specials. I'm a huge Charlie Brown fan. Um, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas special, Halloween special, Thanksgiving special. Just uh, still watch them to this day. Try to catch them every year. It just reminds me of being a kid in the 70s. And uh, so I love those. 21, creating marble roller coasters out of Hot Wheels tracks. Man, that was... I spent hours and hours of doing that. And so what I would do is basically, uh, you know, hook up the, the beginning of the Hot Wheel track as high as I could in my room. And then the Hot Wheels track would go down and I had, you know, those double loops that came with the track. And then I even uh, had some other track from some other like remote control cars and, and I would put it all together. But, you know, just through my room and my walk-in closet and all these rooms in the house on West Broadway, uh, basically, once you sent a marble down that track, it would just go th through the whole track, and it was all—it was just—it was—it was really cool, and it basically kind of looked like a, a roller coaster. And so, um, so I would do that for for hours, make uh, roller coaster tracks for hours. Twenty-two, chewing bazooka gum and reading the comics—that was always fun. Number twenty-three, listening to Fleetwood Mac Rumors album, uh, nineteen seventy-seven. Still to this day, my all-time favorite album uh, when it came out in nineteen seventy-seven. I loved every song on it. I thought it was just the coolest album. I mean, you know, I really like Boston and Kansas and Sticks and, and the rock and roll, but just just as far as just a great sounding album, I don't know why. Just loved uh, Fleetwood Mac Rumors. Uh, 24, watching Happy Day sitcom. Uh, that, you know, I think, thinking back, that was probably the first sitcom that I ever remember you know having to watch you know I, I knew what night it was on what channel and I may and back in the 1970s again no VCR no DVR uh, if you didn't watch the episode that week um, you either weren't going to get to see it or you're gonna have to wait till reruns you know whenever and so you made an effort to be home the night of happy days uh, and watch that show and I just and even in the 70s as much as I love the 70s when I was in the 70s, I actually liked the 50s, and so I would listen to a lot of 50s music in the 70s, and so Happy Days, um, you know, was a 70s show, but it was about the 50s, and so I uh, really enjoyed that. 25, collecting Farrah Fawcett posters and pictures. Uh, became infatuated with Farrah, had all the Farrah Fawcett posters, and I'd buy magazines and cut out, and so I had a whole wall in my room on Johnson. No, actually, I think that was on Grant. Um, that was later, probably late 70s, uh, had moved over to Grant, and, at, and on Grant uh, was where I had a whole wall of nothing but, and it was Charlie's Angels uh, and Farrah, uh, pictures all over the wall there. Uh, 26, trading and selling comic books with friends. That was always fun, uh, you know, trying to get the best comic books. 27, learning tricks and putting on magic shows. I uh, wanted to be a magician when I was a kid, and so I started buying magic sets and learning magic and books. My mom would buy me all kinds of really cool books. She got me the Mark Wilson Course in Magic. I would watch Doug Henning and all those guys from back in the 70s. And then my uncle, you know, the crazy uncle that I call, I, 
crazy uncle, but really cool uncle, he would take me to a magic shop in Oklahoma City or just get me, he would get me the coolest magic tricks, the dove pans or the, um, the Chinese uh, disappearing tube and things like that. So uh, I spent a lot of time um, learning magic tricks and my mom even, uh, I can't remember who built it. Somebody built me a big, I mean a really big bird cage and we have, I had uh, doves in it. Uh, to do in my dove pan trick, which I never really got to work correctly and never really did it at, at a performance. But uh, for years, uh, or at least a year, I had doves in my bedroom just for my magic act. And so, in the, and I did do magic acts uh, for birthday parties. And then Staten and I, uh, we would do mag a magic act together and then a puppet show together as well. So uh, really into magic back in the day. 28, doing wheelies uh, on banana seat bikes. That was always fun. Exploring drainage tunnels under the neighborhood. Um, you know, we would crawl, we would follow Boggy Creek, and eventually it would go underground. And um, there were some, you know, entry areas. And so we would go into those as far as we were brave enough to go. And one area under a really busy part of Enid, uh, kind of the tunnel went from kind of a rectangle to a circle. And for some reason, we named it Spider Tunnel. And so we spent a lot of time playing in those drainage ditches. Um, number 30, seeing Phantasm for the first time. A uh, great memory of the 70s was going to the movie theater, the Video Twin on Friday nights uh, uh, during junior high. And there was a a pizza inn across the street. So you'd go see a movie and then you'd go meet the girls at the pizza inn and then the things were going well or, and you could stay out later. Then there was an arcade uh, next to the pizza inn and you'd go play uh, at the arcade or, and then there was a putt-putt also next to the movie theater or you might go to putt-putt, but they also had an arcade in the putt-putt as well. And so, um, so there was, there's several movies um, that probably three or four that just are stuck in my memory and will never go away um, from the 70s and that time period because it was really fun. It was it was kind of the, the period where we kind of started really becoming interested in girls and actually talking to them and asking them to do things and and so, um, but Phantasm was one of those movies that came out ar around that time. Uh, number 31, listening to Kansas albums with the headphones on. Again, loved Kansas when we formed our band. Um, Carry On Wayward Son was one of the first songs that we learned. We never did it super well because it's a really hard song, but uh, loved listening to Kansas. Number 32, getting to see Evil Knievel jumps on TV. Uh, TV in the 70s was really cool uh, because, you know, there'd be a, they would, uh, there'd be a big lead up to uh, Evil Knievel like on a Saturday. Uh, jumping over something and so that was always cool to get to see him do those live on television. Same thing with Muhammad Ali and his boxing matches. Uh, didn't have to pay. There was no pay-per-view. Uh, it would be like a Friday night fight and he would fight Ken Norton or you know somebody big and, and it would be a huge fight and so we would all, us kids, would kind of get together. Seems like a lot of times we got together at uh, Jason's house but it was kind of that whole gang, our little gang there on West Broadway, the five of us, and we would watch Muhammad Ali as well. Number 34, taking trips to Six Flags, uh, Texas and Missouri. So I uh, never went on a lot of vacations with my mom and sister. My mom was always busy and um, just didn't have a super amount of extra money. And I don't know where we would have gone anyway. So I went on a lot of vacations with Staten. And one of the big vacations we would go every year was to see his family relatives in St. Louis. And while we were there, his dad would take us to um, Six Flags over Mid-America. So uh, we'd do a lot of roller coaster riding and log ride and fun stuff there. 34, staying up to watch Monty Python on Saturday nights. That was always fun, one of our favorite shows. Uh, catching pennies dropped from your elbow. Um, I don't know where we got that from, where that came from, but uh, so back in the day, and I'm gonna show you on the video, you'd put your arm up like this and you could stack pennies on your elbow and then drop your elbow and you could catch them if you were fast enough with your hand and um, I think we got up to where we could catch almost a hundred. You'd, you'd stack four stacks of 25 and uh, you know we did it enough and practiced enough. I think for some, I'm just, I'm just guessing, for some reason it seems like I might have done 
98 at one time in reality it could have been 48 I mean I don't I don't know for sure I don't know what it would be like to get 100 pennies in my hand right now or even um, back in the 70s but <clears throat> that's what it seems like maybe I did I'll have to test that out one of these days um, wearing cutoff shorts tube socks and half shirts um, you know I still have today a love of wearing shorts and sneakers fortunately working for myself I can do that uh, every day of the week if I want to, and that came from uh, the 1970s. Loved wearing cutoff shorts in the 70s. Reading the Sunday funnies in the newspaper. Uh, rarely read the newspaper, but always looked for the Sunday newspaper, and there was a huge pullout section and had tons of cartoons. Unfortunately, as the decades have gone by, the, the cartoon section has gone away in some newspapers and shrunk to almost nothing in others. Um, 39 playing Murder in the Dark in Jason's Basement that again was over on West Broadway and uh, if you've never played Murder in the Dark you might look it up on on Google it's basically um, everybody would draw a card and the person with the suicide jack would be the murderer and you turn out the lights and everybody kind of move around and if the murderer bumped into somebody he would fake stab somebody and then when somebody found the body they'd say murder in the dark and the lights would come on everybody would try to figure out who the murderer was um, played that for hours um, let's see sewing my own puppets to perform puppet shows yeah so during our heyday of doing our puppets we actually uh, Staten's mom took us down to Crossroads Mall in Oklahoma City and I bought uh, an emu puppet that I called Emmett and Staten bought a dog that he called Hugo but we needed a lot more puppets for our show and so I basically used a sewing machine and I would sew my own puppets and you know cut ping pong balls in half and sew the eyes on and um, I'm not sure if I still have some of those around but uh, made several puppets on my own uh, 41 getting a new pair of tracks running shoes those are those really cool low profile with the toes pointed up running shoes those are always fun to get spending the night with friends and not sleeping uh, you know if we usually if it was just me and Staten or me and somebody you know you'd fall asleep by you know midnight or one but if we got three or more guys together uh, sometimes we would stay up all night and not sleep and then be dead the next day. Uh, watching Saturday Night Live and reciting the funny lines, that was always fun. We'd even record uh, some of the Saturday Night Live episodes on our cassettes. I still have some of those cassettes with uh, two wild and crazy guys uh, on those. Uh, building HO scale train set in my walk-in closet. So in the house on uh, Broadway, I had the whole upstairs to myself and and it had a big game room which I had a ping pong table set up then I had my bedroom and then my bedroom had a huge walk-in closet and in that closet my crazy uncle helped me build a HO train set where we took two um, uh, blah, 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 panels wall panels the old 70s wall panels and put them together on the floor and built a train set and even did paper mache mountain with a tunnel in it and uh, just made a really cool fun uh, deal so I'm, you know I would spend hours on my train uh, sticking my head out the car window you know we would do that when we went riding around with our parents uh, reading mad magazine and folding the back page to figure out what uh, the the clues were on that mad magazine uh, that's where I got my love of cartooning from Don Martin so if you uh, see some of my older cartoons. I I, I kind of have a Don Martin style when I do cartooning. Uh, clunking clackers and smashing our fingers. My mom actually had a set of clackers and I would uh, snatch them when she was at work and, and do the clackers. Playing in the sprinklers in the grass. That was always fun. Spending you know hours just jumping uh, in sprinklers and fresh cut grass. The smell to this day of fresh cut grass in the summer takes me right back to the 1970s uh, torturing our gi joes now for several years um you know we did we just spent hours and hours playing with gi joes and building forts and things but then as we got older we started torturing the gi joes and we would uh, tie them to strings to the back of our banana seat bikes and drag them around the neighborhood and 
um, just just did all kinds of mean things to them. And so, of course, we don't have any left. The way they might be worth some money because we, uh, we they just didn't make it. Uh, number 50, am I going to be able to get through all these? I'm going to go try to go a little faster. Hanging black light posters in my room. Um, that was always cool. And then turn on the black light. Um, had several black light posters. Listening to cicadas in the hot summer. Now in Oklahoma, we called them locusts. I, I corrected that because they are actually cicadas. But for some reason in the South, we called them locust. Um, there'd be some summers they were so loud you could barely hear. But man, talk about reminding me of summer. So I grew up uh, the whole time in the 70s, never living in a house with central air conditioning. So we always had uh, a water cooler going and then I had a fan in the window and so I got to hear a lot of cicadas in the summer which uh, you know I'd be sweating it out but looking back at it now I just I wouldn't trade it for anything love the summers catching fireflies putting them in jars was always fun spending an afternoon on a roof, at, roof and jumping off um, you know we were skinny little kids I don't know how we did not break an ankle or a leg jumping off some of the roofs that we jumped off uh, making goofy movies with an 8mm camera. My mom dug eight out her 8mm camera and me and State would go around and, and we wouldn't really make movies but we would just film ourselves doing silly stuff and I I do that 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 uh, footage is on curtistucker.com somewhere but uh, we'd uh, film each other skateboarding and doing stuff like that. Uh, 55 making homemade Rice Krispie treats that was always fun um, you know in the 70s you know, you couldn't go to the store and buy Rice Krispie treats in a box like you can today. So we would get the marshmallow and butter and melt it in a pan and then pour the Rice Krispies in and then put it on a pan and let it dry and then cut it into squares. And then there would be a mess to clean up. But that was always fun. Watching Elvis movies late on the weekends. Now that was earlier in the 70s. And a lot of times that was me and my sister and we would stay up. You know, it seems like an Elvis movie would come on at 10 or 10.30. And so we'd be up to like 12.30 trying to stay awake just to watch the end of the Elvis movie. Uh, 57, feathering my bangs and parting my hair. Yes, uh, in the 70s I did have hair, long hair, and that's kind of why I call myself Shags because I did kind of look like Shaggy back in the 70s. And so I had bangs and I got to actually comb my hair. Uh, sleeping with a box fan in the window, I already talked about that. Making paper airplanes and keeping them in the air. State and I would spend uh, lots of time uh, perfecting our own paper airplane designs and seeing who could keep their paper airplane in the air the longest. Taking trip and sleeping on the hump. Oh yeah, um, not only did we go to St. Louis, but we'd go over to, um, ah, can't remember where his grandma lived, somewhere here, uh, Wagner, Oklahoma. And it was a three or four hour drive, but um, the f I always remember you know, Staten and I would be in the back seat and then to sleep, one of us would lay, you know, and we didn't have to wear a seatbelt. So in the 70s, there was no seatbelt required. And so one of us would lay on the seat and the other one would lay on the floor. Well, cars, all the cars in the 70s, you, most of them had a back seat and there was a hump for the axle. Uh, you know, a hump in the back seat, and and uh, it was always fun just to kind of cuddle up on one side and then put your head on the hump, and the hum of the car and the heat from the car, uh, it just uh, it was a great, it was the best sleep ever. Um, eating zingers and watching banana splits, so that was one of my favorite things to do after school was to run home. Uh, when I was in the sixth grade, uh, I only lived, let's see, basically one block from uh, the elementary school and so um, basically I'd run home and grab a box of zingers and sit there and watch uh, banana splits after school. Watching TV all day when I was homesick, yeah. Um, when you were homesick uh, in Enid, my mom had to work, she couldn't take off and so uh, you'd be there by yourself and you'd watch. That's when you got to see, you know, um, some of the shows on Channel 13. Um, Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street and unfortunately you had to watch some soap operas because there wasn't anything else thing on but then you get into the reruns of the Gilligan's Island and and those shows but uh, spend the whole day just watching TV um, playing kill the man with the ball basically uh, kind of a football whoever had the ball you just try to tackle them uh, shopping with green stamps and licking them uh, you know we would collect green stamps from our grocery store my mom would just kind of have them all over the house and we got a wild hair 
me and the guys would you know, find them all and lick them and put them in the books and then run over to the green stamp store. We never had enough to get anything cool because we were always spending them. I always remember getting a little um, fingernail care kit in like a little blue fake leather case. Um, I think I got that from my mom for Christmas one year. Decorating the Christmas tree with icicles uh, in the 1970s, it was a must to have those big C9 bulbs on your Christmas tree as well as icicles. That was always fun. Shooting Roman candles at each other. Now that didn't really happen until I met Todd. And Todd kind of lives in a weird part of town where it's, it, it, back in the 70s it was a dirt road and it was kind of away from other neighborhoods and with a lot of trees and stuff. And then he had a pasture in the back with a, a little pond. And uh, his house was the one that always had the 4th of July party. So we would go over there and his parents would let us shoot Roman candles um, at each other. Eating four to six bowls of cereal a day out of butter bowls. Yeah, so actually margarine bowls. So back in the 70s, uh, my mom didn't buy butter. She'd buy the margarine in these plastic bowls and they were like blue and red. And um, so those became my cereal bowls and that man, there would be stacks of those in my bedroom. But uh, you know, when she'd buy a new box of cereal, you know, some days I'd eat literally four to six bowls of cereal a day. Um, digging in the cereal box for the prize, that was always fun. They used to have cool prizes in cereal boxes in the 70s. Uh, eating the, at the kid table during Thanksgiving, uh, did that a time or two. Calling into uh, Boogie Check radio show. So later in the 70s, there was a show down in Oklahoma City and uh, Lester Boogie Michaels would let kids call in and do shout outs basically. And so uh, we've got an episode of that on the 70s buzz, but I have the cassettes of those as well, where we would call in and say all kinds of goofy things on there. Building snow forts and throwing snowballs. Um, you know, you just stack the snowball, the snow together and make really cool snow forts. Talking on the phone uh, with girls for hours, the thing there in the 70s, we didn't have cell phones. And so the cool thing, you were cool if you had a phone with a long um, curly extension to the handle and that way you didn't have to be like in the living room or the kitchen. You could like, you know, take the phone to the basement or the hallway and if there was some girl you liked, uh, sometimes you'd talk for hours just because you were afraid to ask her out and it would take you that long to get, you know, get up the courage to ask her out. Um, pulling pranks on my sister and her friends, that was always fun. I was always doing that a lot. Well, just, I think we've got an episode on that. Uh, raising mice, gerbils, hamsters, guinea pig. Um, I was big into always having some type of a pet and at some point, uh, I did have two mice and they became 12 and they became 24 and they became 30 and so at one time I, I did have a lot of uh, small white mice. Building blanket forts all over the house. Uh, the best time to build a blanket fort in your house was uh, during the spring when it was raining outside and you couldn't go outside and do anything. Uh, but the thunder, you could hear the thunder. Uh, it was always cool to curl up in a blanket fort and do something there. Running around the neighborhood barefooted, I talked about that earlier. Picking up 45s at a store called Woolco. Uh, it was uh, several blocks away and across that highway. We would go there and that's where I'd get black light posters, fair posters, and our 45s. Eating buckets of chicken with the family. Uh, one of the big treats in the 70s was going to Kentucky Fried Chicken. And you know we didn't have a whole lot of options of eating out, but that was one of the big ones. Throwing water balloons at cars, uh, big uh, no-no. It wasn't the only thing we threw at cars, but uh, it was always fun on a, usually on a Friday and or Saturday night when my mom was working her night job and we had freedom, everybody would come to my house and we would hide in the bushes in the front yard and when a car would go by, we would chunk things at them. Um, popping Jiffy Pop on the stove when you got hungry watching an Elvis movie. Uh, we didn't have microwaves and so there was no microwave popcorn. So you would uh, use Jiffy Pop. Swinging on a porch with a, a huge porch swing. Uh, my great, well my grandma had a big house with a walk around porch and she had a swing on it and so it was always fun. Uh, you could tell stories for hours just swinging on those big uh, porch swings. Spinning friends really fast on the merry-go-round. Uh, we had several parks in Enid that had merry-go-rounds. They've since taken them all out. And, uh, but I remember one time I, can't, I think me and Mike Stearman had gotten Staten and maybe Todd or Staten and somebody on a merry-go-round. And once you get it spinning it so fast, 
sometimes you can get somebody stuck on there where they just literally can't get up because the, the force keeps them down and um, Staten went home not feeling good that day and I think he, he didn't even play the rest of the day. Choosing 11 records and tapes for a penny, that was the Columbia House, that was fun. Telling ghost stories under the street lights, yeah, um, basically that was all throughout the 70s. I remember doing that as a little kid and then we would do it also uh, with the guys on West Broadway, but uh, always making up jokes or making up ghost stories was always fun, especially under the street light. Collecting pull tabs to make uh, change, yeah, so all cans uh, were, um, they weren't, were they aluminum? They weren't. It was before aluminum. They were really hard cans, but they came with those pull tops, and uh, you'd hook those together and make uh, chains and stuff. Um, reading The Hobbit and writing a book report. Now that was in sixth grade, and our teacher had us read The Hobbit in sixth grade. So that would have been like 1975, 74, 75. That was fun. Having pine cone and crab apple fights. Those could be very painful, but they were fun. Sitting around the campfire, sleeping in a tent. Um, I was a boy, not a boy scout. Well, yeah, I did make it to boy scouts, but um, I was a cub scout and then a weeblo. And during those years, we would go on camping trips and it was always fun. Um, and then also on our retreats when State and I would go to the church camp. Um, now we didn't sleep in tents uh, during that, but we would uh, hang out during the campfire. Hiding in the bathroom during tornado warnings. Yeah, so in the 70s, uh, living in Oklahoma, there's always tornadoes. And so the weatherman would tell you to get to a small room in the middle of your house. And if my mom knew a tornado was coming, we would go get in the bathroom and just kind of have to hang out in the bathroom until the tornado um, threat was gone. Taking trips to the Great Salt Plains. Uh, at the Great Salt Plains, there's an area called the, the Salt Flats and just this huge area uh, flat with uh, just a salt. But um, when you dug below the salt, uh, there's these selenite, selenite, selenite crystals that are only formed with hourglass, hourglass shapes in Northwest Oklahoma. We would uh, drive over there, make a day of it and dig those up. Um, drinking cold pop out of a bottle, uh, that was always fun. Always tasted better out of a bottle in the 70s. Uh, than it does today out of a can. Uh, played a lot of frisbee in, in the park. Uh, Trick-or-treating for hours in our neighborhood. So this was before we started making the forts. Now, we, we started making the forts in the late 70s when we felt like we were too old to go trick-or-treating, but as younger kids, uh, you know, going through our neighborhood, we would, I mean, we would trick-or-treat forever. Um, we walked for miles and miles. Our parents did not drive us around in the car. Uh, so that was always fun. Um, sticking my face in the water cooler cool off. Yeah, so um, you get home if you were hot and our house was never really cold or cool, but the, the quickest way to cool off was just to go stand in front of the water cooler. Some people call them swamp coolers. And it was just a kind of a cool breeze, but with a lot of moisture in it. And uh, one of the things I remember too is my mom would say, go out and water the water cooler. Um, or go out and water the cooler. And so basically what you'd have to do, it had these, these sides to it with this stuff in it. And basically you just have to run the water hose over that, which would kind of help it cool down. And then it would fill the bottom up with water. And I just remember as a kid, my mom always saying, go out and water the cooler uh, to make it cooler. Um, doing can openers off the diving board, uh, always fun. I was always able to do really big splashes um, doing a can opener off of a diving board. Standing over the floor furnace to keep warm, a uh, great memory of the 70s. Uh, the house on uh, Broadway, West Broadway, uh, we did have, you know, uh, individual heaters. It didn't have central heat, but there was heaters in all the rooms, but there was a floor furnace downstairs to heat most of the downstairs. And, uh, you know, it was a fight between me and my sister to see who could stand over that first. Uh, and then, you know, in the middle of winter, sometimes you'd have your shoes on and you'd stand on it too long and it, it would melt the literally melt the bottom of your shoes and, and it'd look like waffles and uh, we did that a lot. Uh, finding a random horny toad in a field that was always fun in northwest Oklahoma. A lot more horny toads in the 1970s. Um, they say because of drought and migration of insects 
it's driven them further south. And so today, well, even in the 1980s, 90s, 2000s, you just don't see as many uh, little horny toads uh, in Northwest Oklahoma as we did. But as kids in the 70s, uh, you could almost always go find a random horny toad um, if you looked hard enough. Uh, eating frozen mini candy bars, one of the favorite things was uh, my mom would buy the mini candy bar, Snickers, um, uh, blah, 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 Snickers, Three Musketeers, Milky Way, and uh, for some reason she would stick them in the freezer and so it was always fun to, even today I still enjoy a frozen Snicker bar, uh, it was always fun eating those frozen out of the freezer. Going to the park to watch the 4th of July fireworks. Uh, our city, Enid, Oklahoma, has a great fireworks display in Meadow Lake Park. It's free for everybody to come to. In the 70s, there would be thousands of people on blankets and uh, you know the, the lawn furniture and just sit there and watch uh, the fireworks. Always a great memory. And number 100, um, and I don't know why I picked this one specifically, but I do remember watching Sonny and Cher on Wednesday nights. That was my mom's bowling night. Uh, McMillan and wife was also on on Wednesday nights, but I uh, always enjoyed the skits and the music and uh, of that, of Sonny and Cher, uh, another great memory of uh, the 1970s. So there you go. Those are 100 of my favorite memories of growing up in the 1970s. And that's not even all. I mean, just I could probably name off another quick 100, but that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, I'd be sitting around as an adult and I'd be like, wow, oh, I remember the, you know, the making the roller coasters out of the Hot Wheels track and all this fun, cool stuff. And so that's why I started blogging and bringing up my memories of the 70s, which eventually led to uh, me starting the podcast. And, uh, you know, to this day, uh, I just still love remembering the 70s. And so uh, hopefully, uh, I know I keep talking about it, but I will get it done uh, here one of these days, writing a book called The Banana Seat Squad. And a lot of these memories are going to be uh, squeezed into that book and, and the whole purpose of writing the book is to bring up all these memories of growing up in the 1970s. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. It was uh, a little bit more about uh, just uh, my memories of growing up which uh, you know are a big part of who I am today. And if you've got some cool memories of the 70s uh, let me know if anything sparked a memory that you had forgotten about let me know. You can hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com. And don't forget to go to Patreon. And if you uh, join for $5, you're going to get that little pack of all the stickers. They're, really, they're high quality stickers. Stick those on your car windows. And uh, the money that I make from that, and hopefully one of these days the NFTs, uh, will we'll go to being able to purchase a uh, gallery or a building where we can do some silk screening and maybe open up a t-shirt store and then also have, uh, hopefully when I get uh, the artwork going, have my artwork on display. And so just all kinds of stuff. And again, just remember, I'm trying to connect with people. So if you guys out there have your own podcast or blog and you journal, let me know. Send me a message and I can share that with other people. Uh, I know there's a lot of you uh, that I know uh, and, and probably a lot of you aren't even watching this or don't, don't watch this, but uh, I just know a lot of people that are interested in one subject or another and they talk about it all the time. I encourage you guys to start your own podcast or start your own blog. It is, it is way, way easier than you think, especially podcasting these days. If you use the Anchor app on a phone, you don't even need a microphone. You can just uh, talk directly into your phone and it records it to Anchor and then Anchor sends it to Apple and all the other places. So um, if there's a subject or a niche or, or something that you guys are really interested in, start your own podcast or blog. You never know where it's going to go. It may fizzle out after seven episodes or, or a couple months, which is fine. I mean, at least you gave it a try. But you know, the cool thing that I really I think about this podcast is hopefully I will have these podcasts stored somewhere. And uh, so not only can my kids listen to these, you know, later down the line, but my grandkids will be able to listen to these. And so if nothing more than just leaving kind of a diary or a journal for your kids and your grandkids, 
um, do some blogging and do some podcasting and let us know what you guys think. And so again, I'm here in uh, Enid, Oklahoma. That's Northwest Oklahoma in the United States of America. If you're listening to this podcast and you live in some other country, uh, let us know what it's like living there for you guys. Uh, it's crazy here in Enid. We, we get the extremes of all weather. Right now we are in spring. Um, tornado warnings are starting up. We get a lot of thunderstorms, flooding, things like that. Uh, we did have a little, a couple, there was actually a couple of snowflakes today. Uh, so we're already uh, March 31st and I uh, saw a snowflake today. So you just never know what kind of weather you're gonna get in Oklahoma. And, and I'll, maybe I'll do a whole episode on um, just weather. And I do have a blog post on chasing tornadoes, and, but I don't think I've done that on a podcast. So maybe I'll, I'll make the podcast episode on that. So anyway, greatly, greatly appreciate you guys. Thanks for checking in. Hit me up, shags at shaggyduck.com. Guys, have a great evening and I will talk to you soon.